hello friends so as i have told you in the previous video that in this video i am going to tell you more about the second law of thermodynamics so here we will start with two statements made by three of them that is kelvin planck statement and clausius statement of second law of thermodynamics let us first understand the definition of these statements let me tell you these definitions are very important so you may note it down so what does kelvin planck statement states it states that it is impossible for a heat engine to produce network in a complete cycle if it exchanges heat only with bodies at a single fixed temperature so what does this statement actually means let me show you very briefly so as the previous diagram if we draw a diagram of a heat engine with this as temperature t let this be the heat engine let it be q1 let it be q2 so as the stem as the statement states that with bodies with a single fixed temperature so if this temperature is t and we assume the temperature of the sink also to be t so there will be no net work done that is no heat transfer will take place from body 1 that is this body to body 2 that is this body this is what the statement of kelvin planck statement is now let us go to the clausius statement of second law of thermodynamics so it states that it is impossible to construct a device which operating in a cycle will produce no effect other than the transfer of heat from a cooler to a hotter body so the schematic diagram as before if we draw it here now let it be the performing body so in this diagram if we consider this temperature to be t1 and this to be t2 and if we consider t1 greater than t2 then by the concepts that i have previously told you we can see that heat transfer from t2 to t1 that is the refrigerating effect or the refrigeration cannot take place without an input of external work if this work is not provided then this possible this process will not be feasible at all so this is what clausius statement is all about so now after the understanding of these two statements let me tell you another important concept that is perpetual motion machine so what is a perpetual motion machine a perpetual motion machine can be divided into two categories number 1 and number 2 ppm 1 that is the perpetual machine motion machine 1 can be defined as a machine or a heat engine that is 100% efficient that is eta is equal to 100% which in this diagram i can show you as if this is t1 and q1 heat is transferred then the whole of this heat is transferred or transformed into work done w no heat is rejected to the sink so this concept or this imaginary machine is known as perpetual motion machine or pmm1 so what does pmm2 refer to the pmm2 or perpetual motion machine 
टू रिफर्स टू द सेम प्रोसेस बट इट्स वाइस वर्सा दैट इज विदाउट एनी सप्लाई ऑफ वर्क द कूलिंग और रेफ्रिजरेशन इफेक्ट और द हीट पंप इफेक्ट इज गोइंग ऑन दैट इज फ्रॉम लो टेम्परेचर टू हाई टेम्परेचर हीट इज बींग ट्रांसफॉर्म्ड और द रेफ्रिजरेशन इफेक्ट इज बींग गोइंग ऑन विदाउट एनी प्रोविजन ऑफ वर्क so this kind of imaginary machine is known as the pmm or perpetual motion machine part 2 or kind 2 now the next topic is equivalence of kelvin planck and cauchy statement so these two statement i have already discussed before now let us see and understand this equivalence by two schematic diagrams let us draw a source which is at temperature t1 let us draw a heat engine operating and also a heat pump operating beside it this is the sink let us assume that heat transfer from here is q1 and here it is q2 this temperature is t2 why i have not drawn this line that i am going to make you understand so here it should be in this direction q2 but to pro prove the equivalence of kelvin planck and cauchy statement first we have to assume one of the statement to be wrong and then pro prove that if one is wrong the other will also be wrong that's how the equivalence have to be proved so by assuming the kelvin planck statement of the second law of thermodynamics that i have already taught you to be wrong so to for kelvin planck statement to be wrong here q2 equal to 0 so which means that no heat is transferred from this heat engine to the sink or you can say no heat is rejected from the heat engine to the sink so let us assume a perpetual motion machine that is the whole of the heat is converted into work done now let us assume a heat pump operating with the same temperature that is with the same sink and source that is t1 and t2 so let us assume that the work input of this heat pump is the same work that is given out or done by the heat engine beside it so what will be the net heat transfer from the heat pump that is q2 and work done added up that is q2 plus w but since we know that no heat is rejected here so w will be equal to q1 w is equal to q1 therefore we can write this heat transfer to be equal to q1 plus q2 q1 plus q2 so when we visualize this concept we will see if we hide this one we will see that the heat pump is operating naturally drawing heat from the lower uh, temperature region taking up work and providing heat to the higher temperature region but if we see all of this machine the whole of this 
द होल ऑफ द सिस्टम वी विल सी दैट नो एक्सटर्नल वर्क इनपुट इज देयर नो एक्सटर्नल वर्क इनपुट इज देयर हेंस विदाउट वर्क इनपुट द इंजिन इज फंक्शनिंग और द हीट पम्प इज फंक्शनिंग हेंस द क्लॉशियस स्टेटमेंट इज नॉट वेरीफाइड सो वी कैन सी दैट इफ द केल्विन प्लैंक स्टेटमेंट वी आर प्रोवाइडिंग एज रॉन्ग देन द क्लॉशियस स्टेटमेंट ऑल्सो डजेंट फंक्शन प्रॉपरली हेंस इट प्रूव द इक्वेलेंस ऑफ केल्विन प्लैंक स्टेटमेंट विथ रेस्पेक्ट टू क्लॉशियस स्टेटमेंट सो प्रीवियसली वी हैव प्रूव्ड द इक्वेलेंस ऑफ केल्विन प्लैंक स्टेटमेंट विथ रेस्पेक्ट टू क्लॉशियस स्टेटमेंट नाउ लेट एस प्रूव द इक्वेलेंस ऑफ क्लॉशियस स्टेटमेंट विथ रेस्पेक्ट टू केल्विन प्लैंक स्टेटमेंट If we draw the same diagram with the same cat temperature T one, here a heat pump and here a heat engine. This is. the sink which is at temperature t2 now let there be let us prove the clausius statement we provided as wrong that is the work input is zero let the work input be zero so we can see the performance of heat engine will be like this q1 w q2 here it will be q2 and here will be q1 now we have provided the clausius statement to be wrong that is no work done is provided so this system if you carefully see constitute of a engine or heat pump that functions without the sink as because the q2 rejected here will be the q2 supplied and without work done this q1 will also be equal to q2 so the temperature difference is not maintained and hence to provide heat from the source to the sink we require a temperature difference that is the temperature should be t1 greater than t2 but with this wrong this is not provided hence we can say that with providing the clausius statement to be wrong the kelvin planck statements gets also wrong this is the equivalence of clausius statement with respect to kelvin planck statement